You're listening to No Hipsters Pod. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Because every little girl watching tonight sees that this is a country of possibilities. And to the children of our country, regardless of your gender, our country has sent you a clear message. Dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourselves in a way that others may not, simply because they've never seen it before. But know that we will applaud you every step of the way. Episode 25, No Hipsters Pod. It's your boy, Ronte, the founder of NoHipstersAllowed.com. And this week, our co-host is my girl, Teresa. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm happy. And, you know, it's it's a great time to be in America. And thank you for joining us once again. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. I feel like this is the first time in months that we can ask people how they're doing and actually right. expect them to say good. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> All right, so let's get right to it. Joe Biden has been elected the 46th president of the United States, and uh, just the nation is coming alive. Uh, everyone's celebrating here in D.C. People are outside of the White House, uh, singing, chanting, um, and, you know, just in New York, everything. Philly, Philly had like a blow up eagle. I'm not even sure why they had that on standby, but they did. <laughs> that a that's, a very, that's a very Philadelphia thing. It, it really, as someone who lived in Philly for eight years, very much a Philly thing. So, um, but yeah, you know, everyone's happy and I'm just excited. So first reactions from you. How are you feeling? Um, my first reactions are that this is something that although I had every hope that it would happen and I looked into every single possible possibility of how this could turn out, I'm still in awe that we did make it here because it wasn't going to be easy. Not at all. Um, it wasn't expected to be easy and it's still not expected to be easy, peachy and um, sunshine and rainbows because right. while there are people who are rejoicing all over the world, really, because I, I saw images from uh, London. Right. Um, I saw from Paris. I saw yes. from Dublin, like so many cities across the world are, you know, are really excited for us. And it just, it feels like a different kind of victory on, uh, uh, actually someone was saying that it, it looks like, you know, how when the Middle Eastern countries overthrow a dictator, like mm -hmm. this is how they, uh, you know, celebrate. And in some ways it feels like that. Cause it's just, it's been a scary time. Like you just have someone who's been breaking the law while, you know, in the presidency. And we've been, we, we got to see how powerful the position is and how the president really is above the law in some ways and so uh, i think it's a special special victory i have to say though as much as i'm happy uh, and as much as it's, it's great that those records turn out you know more people voted in the, an american election than ever before and numbers but also in percentage i think we had like what 70 percent turnout which is unheard of yeah um yeah. it's probably more than that like don't don't quote me on that number but i know it's it's a record turnout um and uh biden got 74 Point five million votes in counting, and Trump got seventy million, which is also like you know would have been a record if Biden didn't yeah. get more. So um, you know, record turnout. But I, I'm a little disturbed at how close it was, not only in um, you know uh, in the key background states, but overall, like you know, more there are people who literally sat out the last election and every election before that, and thought this was the time to actually get off the bench and vote and to vote for. Donald Trump like that's just it's kind of scary to me and um, it, it makes me wonder what the next four years will look like and so mm -hmm. what, what what was your you know what did you think of that because I, I, a lot has been said about it um, I do think that um, I knew that this would be a polarizing election um, and that this would be the election that people really were able to um, gauge how how far people would go to align themselves with certain things. Um, Cause a lot, a lot of the big turnout were, were, were people essentially either standing up and saying that, you know, what has been going on has we is enough, but there's a lot of people who also, they align with bigotry. They align with racism mm -hmm. and they align with whiteness and, and that level of whiteness and money and power 
although they may not even have it. That's something that they still can aspire to. It is so pathetic. All the people, all the broke ass people on Twitter whining about a tax and people who make $400,000 or more is just the most embarrassing thing. Like not only do you not make it, you probably will never make that (laughs) because the fact of the matter is that most people never get to make that much money. And so, but you can't tell someone that uh, you could not possibly uh, tell someone. Right. But it's like, yo, like you barely have a GED. Why are you worried about $400,000? Like, I mean, because wait till I flip this 20,000 that I I get. (laughs) Wait till I get, wait till I flip it and I'm able to, (laughs) to turn my, $50,000 <laughs> Fifty thousand a year into four hundred thousand, I mean, <laughs> and then I don't want anybody coming to me and taxing me, y'all crazy. Right. <laughs> but it's people just... are absolutely insane. There's a majority of people who entered into poverty since this pandemic began. Right. There's a majority of people who either have contracted this virus or they know someone who has passed away from this virus and they're not willing to say that this pandemic was poorly handled. They're not willing to say that the, the, the state of us having so many people living in poverty in what is supposed to be a superpower in the world, that is third world country ish. And, and not only is it very ghetto, but we're leaning even more into it. Right. We're leaning very hardly into it. So right. at the rate to which we were having a majority of Americans who were not able to work in a majority of Americans who don't have now don't have any access to health care, but yet they're possibly facing one of the most scariest health crises of our generation right and I, that it's just it's okay. and one thing that people don't realize that covid if you get it like there's no telling how long you be with that because apparently some people mm-hmm. have symptoms months after the fact even when they start testing negative like they still have some like lagging symptoms and so i don't think people get how terrible this thing is and how really callous it is for trump to strip away parts of the Affordable Care Act at a time like this. And so, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure what people were thinking. He increased, like, I mean, you already, we already know more people came out to vote for him, but it wasn't like all white people and all white men. It was, you no. know, white women went from 53 to 55%. Black, even though black women was still like, you know, overwhelmingly democratic, they went mm-hmm. from 93% to 91% uh, for Democrats. So meaning more black women voted for Trump this time around. And then black men, at 18%, like one in five voted for Trump this time around. And I'm not really sure what's going on. Like, cause this comes really at like at the end of months of protest about black men being killed at the hands of police and Trump being completely opposed to the protests. And Ooh, don't get me started like, on black men. Like, no, no, I, I, I do want you to get started because I mean, because I actually posted about it on the blog the other day, and there are people like getting at me in the comments saying like, "Oh, blame black men when yada yada." Oh, well, white women too. I don't give a fuck what white women do because at, no. at the end of the day, their stakes in this are so much different from yours, right? So, and not only that, that's white people business. Right. <laughs> okay, so if we're minding black people business, if we're minding our own black ass business, <laughs> then that means that when yo daddy or your brother, or whoever it was left the house to go and vote. There was a black mother, there was a black sister, there was some black babies in that house that they needed to go and vote on behalf of. And what did they black asses go there and do? Something stupid. Right. You went and you did something stupid. You had the option to do nothing at all. And bro, I would have I would have even felt a little yeah, yeah, as much as I even frown against uh, frown, frown upon that. Uh, that's even, you know, less disgusting than mm-hmm. you going out of your way to vote for someone who has been so overtly racist, so overtly mm-hmm. hostile towards you. And the thing is, is that the percentages are there. The the information is out there. And it seems as though whenever black men are criticized, it's immediately like, oh, this shell comes up when it's like, as if we aren't going to check you and look at you like, what the hell did you do, dummy? <laughs> What you had one job. one job, you had one job. Right. And th- th- protect, protect your family. That is it. Protect your people. Or, that is or, it. Or, or, you know what? Or protect yourself. Like, exactly. like, how can you not even know what your own interests are? Like, and this year has really shown us the the length to which stupidity will take you to. Because you can sit there and think that oh, maybe the police 
are shooting these black men because they're all angry and they all don't know how to talk to the police right. because that's their personal issue. Right. And you can think that and you can stand out there and say that. And it, this year it literally happened. Somebody literally tweeted or posted on, on Facebook. I'm sorry. Posted on Facebook how these police officers are not all bad and that, oh, it's not it's not every single one of them. And we tend to generalize every single one of them. And it was a police officer that murdered him. It was a right, police officer. I remember that. I do remember that. One. And the thing is, is that the most respectful thing to do would be to not even bring up that though that was his last post. That was not a, a past post. That was literally what was sitting on his heart the moment that they took his last breath. So if you needed physical proof, you needed to see it happen mm. in order to believe that you caping for these racist murderers is going to change anything. It does not. It does not. The statistics are there. The cases are there. It's happened. And yet you still woke your black ass up and marched on down and you aligned with what you wanted to align with, which was whiteness, right. which was, which was uh, uh, money. And you wanted to align with bigotry. Right. That is, that is what you wanted to align with. And that essentially that's what a lot of things have been. If you actually look at the history of America, a lot of times whiteness is just this concept that people want so badly. It's not the American dream. It's the white dream. We didn't, we've never had access to just moving around and speaking freely or getting the great jobs and being able to access this American white dream of having these nice homes. We don't have the same access to the, these things that white people do. And we're being told that, oh, that's the dream. And that's what we're supposed to be working hard to. And allowing ourselves to be kind of, um, indoctrinated into thinking that that's that's what we'll get by behaving a certain way is what it's, has it's, essentially brought us into this position right and it, it also I'm, I'm also struck by the fact that the Lil Wayne and Ice Cube and Kanye did move the needle and I, I remember I remember screaming mm -hmm. on on Twitter like listen even if they they, they shave off just three percent of the black male vote that is still like a substantial amount because a lot of these mm -hmm. you know cities with with these battle states right, down to the thousands. right and so many of those states because they, they're oh they're only that close because they're cities that have large black populations so even if you shave three percent that that could have a material effect on the outcome of the election right and so mm -hmm. i i was worried but i i honestly didn't think that it could be as bad as it was which is 18 percent and so we have the rappers, but we also have to talk about ADOS and how it's being, you know, it's an insidious thing that's slowly chipping away at the black vote. And it's very much a Russia powered thing um, to an extent and also Republican funded. I mean, it, literally the, some of the heads of those things are being funded by Republicans. And I don't think people are paying enough attention to that. And so th I think those are some of the things we need to look at and uh, find ways to counter in the next four years. Cause I'm really, I mean, I, I think that the battle is, just beginning in many ways um uh joe biden's campaign slogan was you know fight for the soul of america and i really think that's what this was because mm -hmm. it like a lot of people got off the bench to to you know to let it be known where they stood and luckily they were outnumbered but clearly there are a lot of people that are pro-racism uh pro-homophobia pro you mm -hmm. know just dishonesty and it we really have to not get complacent because it, this shit, like we literally could have had 2016 all over again because the polls in the last week were showing a 10 percent spread that's not yeah. what happened. that's definitely not what happened and so i mean we need to figure figure this out i'm not sure how i i definitely feel as though um there isn't enough emphasis in um following the money for um, a lot of these organizations. And a lot of times people are quick to, I do, I do appreciate the fact that social media allows people to try to check their facts a bit more now before they go ahead and post things. Yeah. So there's a lot more safeguarding to um, spreading misinformation. Right. Um, however, information still can be skewed to a certain way. Um, and I feel like organizations like that, a lot of times we can tell why they're being skewed or whether or not they are, or it's, it's just a fact that's being presented. Right. Um, but 
simply by following the money. Right. Um, so I, I agree that that's been one of the most dangerous portions of this election. And that's something that um, we're now opening our eyes to more. Absolutely. And I, I also think to an extent, there is just a general aversion to easily obtainable facts by certain segments of even not just even black people, just people in general, where like, you know, during the primary, people would say things about Kamala Harris that were just so blatantly false and just easily debunked. And there was a refusal to like read the facts. Like people were literally mm-hmm. saying that she was for the death penalty when she was on record saying that she was like, <laughs> like, how do you just say that someone is for the opposite of what they're for? And I, <laughs> even when I like literally sometimes you have to like it, like do the work for them and just go pull the video from YouTube of her saying she's against it over and over again and it's like yo this was out there and you're kind of just running away with a falsehood and you're you're repeating it with confidence on the internet like why 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 can't you just just read the like why like why 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 do we do this I was actually told by a Trump supporter um, that uh, the Democrats have been trying to make this a race issue and it's not a race issue. And if they really knew what they were talking about, that um, they would look into how Biden called blacks super predators. Um, and as soon as that came out, I immediately had tuned out of the conversation and I had to let them know that Biden never said that. Right. Um, and now I kind of quietly whispered it because this person was very passionate and it, I didn't think that they had realized how deeply they had embarrassed themselves. <laughs> but it, it, it's easy for you to attach yourself to something because it aligns with what you've already decided that you agree with. Right. You've already decided that you agree with this. So you want to believe that Biden said that. Right. And I, I had to, and they got upset and they were like, no, he did say that. Right. You should look it up. You don't know what you're, what you're talking about. Do your Google. Right. So, <laughs> well, how like, people, so, yeah. So people were like hung on the, the knife for crime and like, oh yeah, he never apologized for it. And I'm like, yo, he definitely did. And, yeah, and multiple times. Right. And, and, the, and the funny thing is that when people say things like that, it's like, his apology is not, what your decision was kind of like, you know, based right. on like you, you're never, cause even when they see the apology, half of them will say, Oh yeah, it's, it's insincere. So clearly mm-hmm. your decision was not about a, an apology <laughs> that you were always going to dismiss as insincere. So I, I you know, even if you're going to do something that was against your s- interests, at least be honest about it. Just so okay, you just, right. just want to vote for Trump for whatever reason, you just would rather do that. Right. <laughs> and sometimes it's just out of just, you know, pure contrarian inclinations and that's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but like, whatever, but don't try to intellectualize your bad decision with falsehoods. And that's what so many people on the internet are doing right now. And it's just, it's really, really sad. But anyways, let's, let's pivot a bit. Cause we, we, you know, I think we've, we can go on forever about this. Uh, we really, (laughs) we really can. And I'm trying to get to as many topics as possible. And history was made yesterday. And because of just the weirdness of the election, I don't even know if we're talking about it enough, but for the very first time, America has a woman as vice president, a Mm -hmm. black person as vice president, and a South Asian as vice president. And, you know, it's funny, Maya Rudolph on SNL also added one more, a biracial person, which I guess is another, you know, box we can Mm -hmm. take. And so Kamala Harris has made history. And I think you already know how I feel about Kamala. So I was especially ecstatic, but um, it, I think it's a good day and there's just only one last ceiling to break. Hopefully it's broken in the next um, mm-hmm. 48 years. We've definitely watched um, the trajectory of Kamala and you and I have been talking about it <laughs> since before she had announced when we felt the announcement. Coming. Right, right. And so to see it end in this way really kind of, um, it really brought a lot of hope and joy to a lot of people's spirits. Um, it was inspiring. Yeah. It was very inspiring. But you can definitely see that she is a, a rising star. Um, she's very extremely hardworking and, um, in my opinion, well-deserved of um, this accolade. So, I mean, for a lot of people who are in the into politics, they, they do see her as being a forerunner for 2024. Right. Um, it's very obvious that this is not the end of where her legacy will grow to. And it's not the end of where she will inspire other women of color to be able to go in this country. So um, I love it. That's just been amazing. Yeah. 
it's been amazing to watch. And you already know that uh, HU grads are going to be just truly insufferable for the next however many years. <laughs> and I love it. And I love it. And now you know what? And you know what? DC is probably going to be painted pink and green um, the week of Fast. inauguration as they are bringing in their Founders Day. And they deserve. Right. They deserve. Right. Because for an administration to have um, been... So, um, and, and this is mainly towards the Department of Education for the, in the Trump administration, um, for them to have been so anti-historically black college and um, the funding to be something that has barely been emphasized in black colleges b- before the Trump administration. Um, for you to now be able to see that a graduate of a historically black college is not only a worthy person for you to be able to um, hire a hireable person that these institutions are something that, that provide us a, a incubator of a, a space for us to be able to rise and continue rising and to see the best in ourselves. That's been absolutely phenomenal. And Howard, they're already a, an obnoxious. <laughs> already. Already. So, already. <laughs> so I, I expect them to be loud and proud and for the next four homecoming to be absolutely off the hook. Right, right. Speaking of the next four, what do you see this next four years looking like? Like, what do you think, you know, I mean, Biden's already announced a few things on the agenda, like really early, but what do you, how do you, I'm just like, just as far as what the administration is going to do, but also just culturally what the country is going to look like. Cause I think we're going to have something of another tea party kind of (laughs) insurgency, if we can call it that, because I already see these people acting nuts and screaming out, you know, about counting the votes outside of buildings where votes are being counted. Like, I'm not really sure why that's, that needs to happen. Yeah. But clearly these next four years are going to be interesting. And so what, you know, what does your crystal ball tell you? Um, honestly, I, I feel as though the next four years, we need to prepare ourselves for a lot of, um, a lot of pushback because the type of progress that, um, the American voting public really is going to be looking for. They're going to be willing to galvanize their actual local leaders this go round because now it's even more important to make sure that it actually gets done because in four more years, we're going to have to prove that this was the lesser of the two evils that this did wasn't actually a catalyst for, um, even more destruction and even more rebellion in America Um, because Trump Trump's base is still empowered and America is still America. America has, has had a foundation of racism since its beginnings. And so there's a bit of racism. I feel like that has been allowed and allotted for that is kind of going to be the deciding point between whether or not these Republicans for Biden feel as though they made the right choice or whether or not even the Democrats for Biden feel as though there is any difference in between the two evils at all. Right. And just, I'm going to bring up something that's slightly related, but not really. But did you see that yesterday, Donald Trump's team meant to hold a press conference at the Four Seasons in Philadelphia? But ended up I... ended up scheduling for the Four Seasons Landscaping Company, <laughs> so they actually had to I go. I'm so to... confused. <laughs> they actually how did how did that happen? I was so confused. It's like it just shows. I mean, it's just it's it's really you know in keeping with just their tradition of rookie mistakes. And it's funny. The reason why I'm even like thinking about that right now is that someone has created a Four Seasons MAGA page, and the person literally just commented on the blog as we were talking. <laughs> That's funny. So that's why I'm laughing about this. It's really just embarrassing. And I'm just so happy that we have these clowns out of office. Um, it's really sad. But yeah, another <laughs> thing is... <laughs> and there are these. Watching watching everything go up in flames has been my favorite song. Right. Because I have to say, it reminds me of that meme 
of like that rich white woman outside on her porch with her fur on with her wine right 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 yeah yeah, 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 that was (laughs) and it's like you know she's watching destruction just look at the smile (laughs) on her face like just you know that it's pure and utter bedlam in front of her and then she's just sitting there like i'm protected right right (laughs) and another question is what if trump decides to not leave the white house which loki i'm kind of hoping he does that so he can really be embarrassed Mm -hmm. out of you know and and bundled out by secret service and really Mm -hmm. be made a fool of the way he deserves to be but what do do you think do you think that's going to happen I I do believe that is going to happen. Um, And I do believe that the, uh, the, the next administration has already taken steps to assure that that doesn't happen as well as other, um, other political leaders. Um, I feel like they've heard him say it and nothing he has said has been taken lightly. Um, The statement that he made was that if, he loses, it's because of fraud and that he won't be leaving. Um, so I've, I've heard, um, and, and I'm not too sure if the source is completely reliable, so I suppose it's just hearsay, <laughs> but um, I have heard that um, they have already began to instruct um, the Secret Service as to how to respond to any types of pushback. Um, And I do believe that, you know, they have taken necessary precautions to make sure that if he is assembling his own um, force to strike back against that, that um, they're also preparing for that as well. It's it's the smartest thing to do because although there are people who are happy, there's an equal, if not a slightly smaller group of people that are angry and um, anger tends to um, evoke emotion and e- will evoke action more than any other emotion. True. Let's change gears just a little bit. Well, not change gears a lot of it. Uh, let's talk about the Birkin bag debate that has taken hold of the black internet, you know, uh, base over the last <laughs> couple weeks. Um, have you seen any of it? And what are your thoughts? My thoughts are um, Saweetie for President 2024. <laughs> um, if she would like to hold a press conference explaining why her Birkin bags are worth bragging on, then I will be tuning in for that press conference. Um, <laughs> you know, let me say that. So, Saweetie, you'll know, make the same man. If he not getting you a Birkin, if he not paying for your bills, then throw that nigga back to the streets, okay? <laughs> People were like debating that, and my thing is, I don't even know why we're taking her literally. She clearly isn't being that. Yeah, serious. it's funny because her latest single is "Back to the Streets," and everybody doesn't understand that she literally was just yeah. making a nod to her single right. that had just dropped. <laughs> and everybody talking about the Birkin bags are focusing on the comment. You literally were just driving her fans and those that are kind of interested in becoming her what? fans it's to go and stream. Just the whole thing is weird because, like, <laughs> after like we are at this point, we are decades into like hip hop being like a you know a mainstream genre, and there have been so many rappers who said outrageous things that we kind of just like yes! you know understand that it's part of their rap persona and not taking that seriously. And so I don't really I, I was so confused by the debate, but even more interesting actually was when um, Offset bought. Cardi B a whole bunch of Birkin bags and I guess someone made a, a, a snide comment somewhere and I think maybe maybe it was Yaya Mayweather I'm not really sure of the trajectory because there are literally a million like different posts about it but it became this whole scene where Cardi B ends up having to put out a video first thing first right I definitely could get a bag actually I got four bags today for the Hermes store that's one I don't want to brag but it's like don't even try it and second of all how do why is it that y'all asking female rappers if y'all could get a if they could get a bag from the Hermes store? Y'all don't do these to these white celebrities. Y'all don't do these to these white celebrities. So why is it that y'all gotta be asking us? What the fuck? In some ways, I, I thought it was it was great, but in other ways, I just mm-hmm. feel like just the whole obsession with Birkin bags is like just. 
it's it's almost becoming a pathological type of materialism where it's like it's giving me slight you know why do you love your oppressor so much vibes like yes like, because yes. At, the end, I get it. at the end of the day it's just like yo like even if you went to the store these people would treat you like she oprah went to an hermes store and couldn't get a bag because you know the lady in there was acting like she couldn't afford it and so she ended up like not buying it because she wanted to give them their money but like this is how lowly like they think of us and so it mm-hmm. to me it makes me cringe um to see them exalt this brand this much on the internet okay so the actual bag does kind of look like an overpriced diaper bag to me to me it does look like an overpriced diaper bag because where are you carrying that big ass bag to the club (laughs) where are you where are you taking it to it's it is a very large bag it's not really an over an everyday bag but my my outlook on it um when cardi spoke on it when um sweetie spoke on it i just kind of felt like you know um, there seems to be a little bit more pushback less because this is a, um, a situation of supporting the wrong people. It was seem it seemed more to do with the fact that a black woman wanted something of luxury. A black woman made sure that her goal was to be able to obtain this something of luxury, whether she obtained it for herself, whether her man felt like she deserved it and gave it to her either way, she made sure that, you know, she wanted something that, white women are able to get and to have as a status of their, their, um, success and that we deserve to black women in luxury is, is now a thing that we, we are pushing right. for. Um, so when they spoke on that, I definitely also, it felt like, um, because they were the people who did right. speak on it. Okay. Um, that wasn't necessarily something that could be upheld because they have supported black designers. They have black stylists. Um, these are women who employ black people and basically empower them to feel as though I too have access to these things. Now, granted, yes, you know, some of these, most of these major houses Don't respect it. That's just are, the truth. Are, 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 are racist. That is a fact. That is an absolute fact. And they will use a Rihanna as a face and say that, oh, this person now is with us. So therefore we are with you guys or they'll use a Virgil Abloh as a face and that house still has a history of racism. That house still is this Italian racist fashion house that does not really care for black people. Um, so those are, I felt like two completely different, um, battles and ways in which to kind of, um, look at the whole entire broken situation. But, um, I mean, we, we can, we can do both. We can experience luxury and we can support, um, black designers right. at the same yeah. time. Okay. The whole thing just, you know, just made me, just made me cringe a bit, but you know, they got it. It is what it is. <laughs> let... They do got it. I can't, I really honestly can't knock it because I right. can't afford it. I don't right, 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 right. <laughs> Let's talk music. Ariana Grande dropped a new album just a little over a week ago. It's for six. It's called Positions, uh, named after her, you know, lead single. I actually reviewed it mm-hmm. on the website, nohipstersallowed.com. I thought it was a pretty solid album. What did you think? I haven't gotten to through the whole entire thing because my friends won't let me get past 34 <laughs> plus 35 and positions. So when we finally are able to stop standing those, then I can give you a more, a more, more detailed opinion. Um, I, you know, I will yes. say, you know, 34 plus 35 is pretty clever. And I think it's, it's just the whole, the album is, I mean, there are definitely a couple of duds here and there, but the album is really well done. And I think mm-hmm. she is kind of settling into her own style, which is very much derivative of like Mariah Carey style. But, you know, I think she's, she's, it's, she's settling into it you know, nicely now. And I, I think yes. it, it's, it's a really, really solid album. So yeah, definitely. I think you should go listen to it. Um, I, I enjoyed reviewing the album and it's a different side of her. It's a completely different side of her. And yeah, I it's, like it's, that. It's, it's, it's a little bolder than her previous projects, if that makes any sense. So pretty, pretty good work. Pretty good work. But all right. Winners and losers, Teresa, you're the guest. So I'll let you go first. Um, I, I, this is, I feel like every time I come back here, I'm like, black women, right. black Go, women win. Black women win. Black Go, women no, win. It's facts. <laughs> it's facts. I mean, <laughs> guess who my winner is again? Black yeah, women. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, they, black women are literally trying to save the world. It's been amazing to watch. Um, and so, first, um, Stacey Abrams, shout out to you um, and the just the effort that you've put Remarkable. forward. 
despite despite the fact that your win was stolen from you, your moment was stolen from you, um, putting together an organization that actually helped other people. And that's another thing about Black women is the fact that um, just trying to save ourselves, we save so many other people. And it's this self-preservation that has truly been what has drawn us across the finish line for um, this right. big win. And that includes um, Simone Sanders pulling us across the mm-hmm. finish line, um, uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre, um, uh, Abby Phillip, um, 32-year-old uh, CNN <gasps> yes, um, I like correspondent, her a um, PG County representative. Uh, so shout out to products of PG County uh, <laughs> schools. Um, she is a Bowie, a Bowie High School I graduate. I know that. Wow. Um, yeah, so she is from here and she really, really held her own and really, really just represented very well. Um, but yeah, black absolutely, women. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Who are you losers? Um, I would say my losers for this week would definitely be Trump's urban endorsements that came through this last week. Um, and that includes Anuel, um, and that includes, um, Lil Wayne, that <laughs> includes, um, it, it's just the, the list goes on of hip hop big heads that had the opportunity to not say nothing at all, but decided to say that they support and they stand for Trumps. And I, 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 and the fact is that they waited until the last moment, um, which is the most critical yeah. time frame in a presidential election. They waited until the last moment to step out and to say that um, this is who they support and that's who they're throwing their support behind. There will not ever be any type of apology for that level of irresponsibility. Um, and the money that you were paid to just sell your own people, um, that really is just like that, that that's like blood yes. money. Um, and that includes I'm Lil Pump. Yeah. Who, AKA um, Lil Pimp. Or, or Lil Pimp. <laughs> Lil Pimp, if y'all want to call him that. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, but you, you, you also are selling your people by, you know, knowing that there are children in cages. There are parents that are separated from their children that will never be reunited with their children. And this is the person who is responsible for that. Um, and you're leading your people into even more darkness. So, um, y'all lose, y'all thought y'all tried, y'all lost. All right, so my winners are Joe and Kamala for sure. Um, you know, I, I mean, who, who else? Um, I was, <laughs> it, it was a long couple of days, but, you know, we made it through. So congrats to both of them. My, my second one is America for, for coming out to vote in such large numbers. And specifically Atlanta. Right, yeah, shout out to Atlanta <laughs> and shout out to, to Philadelphia for sure. So, you know, absolutely. And of course, black women, like you said, you know, I mean, even though the, uh, uh, Trump was able to chip away at the, the majority, but still 91% of black women voted for Biden and Harris. And, you know, we just, we, we shouldn't ever stop singing the praises of black women. My losers, I mean, this is probably one of the longest lists I've ever had. Of course, we have Donald Trump and um, I couldn't be happier to see such a, you know, a, a, a mean, a racist, such an indecent person uh, being made to lose. And because I know this hurts him you know, especially because he's such a fucking baby. And I don't think he is even <laughs> used to like losing anything. I think he's cheated all his life. And according to his, his niece, actually, some uh, people wrote his like SATs for him. So this is a man who's cheated mm-hmm. all through life and has won while cheating. And so, you know, it's never too late to, to teach a lesson. And so I'm, I'm happy to see him, uh, lose. Um, and then of course, the people who sat out every election and then decided to get off the bench for a person <laughs> like this, are really just all have a lot of soul searching to do and because I'm not really sure why you'd be that moved to support someone who's so you know plainly evil and of course 
Ice Cube, Lil Wayne, Kanye, Lil Lil Pimp. Even uh, apparently, <laughs> all of it. Apparently, Polo the Don was at the White House the other day, uh, watching uh, election results. So he's he's among the dummies. And um, I, I really, really want to understand why people would shit on their legacies for someone who clearly doesn't respect them. Um, and I'm embarrassed for all of them. And I actually shout out to. It's very <laughs> embarrassing. You're right. <laughs> You're very right. <laughs> are you are it's you embarrassed? It's very, very right. embarrassing. <laughs> and it's funny, you know. And shout out to Regine Carter and uh, Toya Johnson for for subbing Lil Wayne on Instagram because <laughs> he deserves it. Um, and he and he really mm-hmm. should issue a public apology because this just makes no sense. And last but not the least, black men specifically 18 percent. let's be specific because not all the overwhelming majority of black men did the right thing but there was an 18 percent who did you know the wrong thing you're presented with a very very clear choice and you got it wrong right. Teresa, once again thank you for stopping by i couldn't thank you enough i always always enjoy a conversation so yeah, honestly, honestly honestly and so before you leave um plug your social media real quick i am at r-e-e-s-i-e underscore R I C H R E C underscore rich, and that's on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me on Facebook. Every now and then, I tend to post. So I like to keep it. Love it. Love it. All right, episode twenty-five. No hipsters pod. Talk to you next time.